Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here, back to continue documenting Wally Cleaver's descent into madness and blood in another episode of Shelter. Wally, man, his dark metamorphosis is really sort of getting pretty disturbing. I mean, before, I thought he was just some sort of depraved serial killer, which admittedly is not good, but in the stark bleak reality of a post-apocalyptic world, a man who's willing to kill without remorse, a man who can kill without any sign of moral quandary or even a recognizable shred of human emotion, a man like Wally, say, that man, he's got a purpose. It's a horrible, horrible thing to admit, but somebody who can dismember a freshly strangled vagrant with no more emotion than he'd show splitting a cord of wood, that man can be useful. And I thought that that's what, what I thought that's what Wally was gonna do for the Cleaver family. I thought that's what House Cleaver's role was for Wally. He was gonna be their hatchet man. But he's getting out of control. At first, Wally was only harming threats to the family, and you know, then he expanded his repertoire a little bit and started harming anyone who even seemed like they might eventually become a threat. And then it just became anyone he happened across, and now, now he's just like murdering random animals, for crying out loud. He found a bear in the woods last episode, and he chopped it apart like it was made by Haribo out of delicious gummy. And I, I don't know what to do about it. It's not like anybody in the Elston family can put Wally down. No one's got the soup to stop his rampage abilities. They're all afraid. They're afraid because they know that if it comes down to a fight, Wally is taking two or three of them down with him when he goes. It's a, it's a troubling situation. Also troubling is the fact that Donna is totally trying to hand that rocks the cradle, my golden-haired goddess June Cleaver. Yeah, don't think I forgot about you, Donna. It's been a few days since I played Sheltered, but you better watch yourself because I will not hesitate to turn Wally loose on you. I will let him chop you up, and you'll wind up stew meat chilling in the fridge along with that last guy whose name I think was George. I don't remember. All I can remember about him is that he was delicious, really. But you'll, you'll wind up in there with him. Got an incoming radio transmission here. We also have Laura and George. Laura and Joyce? Yeah, George is the freezer guy. We have Laura and Joyce out in the wilderness as well, getting some stuff done for us. Yes, you should absolutely examine that small house. Can of petrol. All right. I'm, I don't really need limestone. I think we'll leave the limestone and wood. Normally, I just take everything, and we are almost once again. Wally, what's wrong with you, buddy? Or Beave? Uh, you have food poisoning. Did you eat while you were filthy, beaver? You know what? I'm going to send you out into the wilderness with food poisoning. I don't even care. As soon as Wally and the beef take care of their needs, I'm sending them right back out into the into the wilderness because we are at maximum water capacity here, and it's raining. I don't really... Speaking of which, June, you don't by chance need a shower, do you? No, Wally does. Wally, go... Actually, go take a shower. While it's raining, let's use up as much water as we can. Found something this large hardware store. Of course I'm interested in the goods in a hardware store. It's a hardware store. Pretty sure we already have a chisel. I definitely want this metal. Absolutely want those gas masks. Nails, springs, light bulbs. The wood is a definite must to pick up. The nylon I will take. I need that wire, too. Four hinges, I simp. That, that's, that's a huge find. We cannot pass that up. The spark plug has to come back. We don't have the ratchet yet. Uh, I would love to get these wires, but all of this other stuff is a bigger priority than wire. Can't do it. Sorry, we got up. No, nope, that's fine. It's going to have to stay gone. We do have Wally, or uh, Joyce and June, I think, are out on a relatively short trip. Hey, uh, Francis, good guy Francis, with Mr. I'd, I've just got a suit here. Oh, Francis is back to full loyalty. We could send him out on a mission, too. Maybe we send Francis out by himself. St. Pete, that seems horrifically risky for a man like Francis. He's never been outside the shelter on his own before. You know, he was out on his own for a good long while before we brought him into the shelter. What if we send June? Uh, well, here, let's just do this. Yeah, we'll take... Uh, yes, fine, search it. But we got to set up an expedition here first. I think we're going to send out June Cleaver and good guy Francis. There's nobody I trust more than good guy Francis. I mean, we call him good guy Francis because he's a good guy. He's a good egg. He's not going to try any funny stuff with June Cleaver, my golden-haired goddess. He's going to protect her. He's going to keep her safe. And he's going to keep his filthy hands off of her if he knows what's good for him. Otherwise, he's going to wind himself, uh, find himself on the business end of Wally's axe. Nobody but nobody touches June Cleaver. Except me and Ward Cleaver because, you know, I can't convince her that he's a 
desperate scumbag who's currently right now two timing her with Donna took Donna out to a fancy dinner at the only restaurant in the apocalypse. <sighs> Who, which group is this? So we do have two groups out right now. Where do we want to have these guys go? We have 200 water at our disposal. 200. That's a lot of water. We could send them out to check out the scalpers territory, but that seems a little dangerous. That's maybe a risk I don't want to take with the love of my life. We were just at that recycling center five days ago. Three days ago, 21 days ago for this medium house. It's been a goodly while since we've been to Brookbank, it looks like. Small factory, small farm. We haven't really hit any of these small homes. Okay, so let's do this. We go, bam, small farm. Well, here, let's, how long? 10 days. So, no, undo this. Small house, small farm. Then, bang, 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 bang. We do a zigzag pattern. We come down here, grab this. We're only at 58 water. And I think we come down here, hit this because it's unknown. We stop at this mine on the way back. 66 water, a good long journey. Let's do it. What kind of equipment can we give you guys? Well, you're going on a really long journey. The rucksacks we normally save for Wally and the Beeve because we tend to send them on the longest of journeys. Uh, let's handle the weapons first. June, you've got a seven strength, so probably a knife is going to be your best bet. Not quite strong enough for the baseball bat. We've got two knives. I'm okay with this. We'll give each of you... We're definitely going to give you a tent as well. Or do we want to save the tent for Wally and the Beeve? Maybe we save the tent for Wally and the Beeve. Let's keep the tent for Wally and the Beef. We'll go with satchels, I think, for extra storage. June, you get a gas mask. Are we going to give good guy Francis a gas mask? It is his first... Yeah, okay. Good guy Francis, I'm going to give you a gas mask as well because it is your first trip out. It's probably the safe thing to do. If we're going to... you know. Also, we don't want to tip Francis off to our plan. That's our other thing. When there's somebody in a shelter that we don't want in a shelter anymore... We send him out without a gas mask and let him die of radiation poisoning. It's kind of my shtick. It's my secret weapon. It's the greatest weapon in my arsenal, too. I can just send you out to die of radiation poisoning. Yeah, that's good. Let's do that. All right. Get thee gone from my sight. There's a medium dust storm on the surface. The rain has stopped, but we've got 134 water, which is absolutely plenty to keep House Cleaver rolling for a good long while. I'm just check out a school in the wasteland. I'm kind of glad we didn't send Wally or the Beeve out to check out that school, because they'd have murdered everyone inside, and I don't want the deaths of children on my hands. I mean, Wally and the Beeve are unrepentant killers. Sending them out to just chop up a school? I can't feel good about that. Donna and Ward checking out a large house. Well, we're going to take this gas mask. We sort of don't have room for anything else. That hinge? Hinges will stack to six, okay. Switches I don't really need. The rope I don't really need. Motors, cans of paint, fuel. I sort of feel like I have all of these particular needs covered. The food ration would be nice, but our pantry is basically full anyway. We've been eating a lot of human, so we haven't necessarily had a lot of need for the canned food. We're not eating a lot of SpaghettiOs when we got George going bad in the freezer. We gotta get... You should always get involved, Laura. It's a chance to increase your statistics, either through talk and, you know, non-violent conflict resolution, or through, you know, liberal applications of knives and vital organs. Perfect opportunity for the both of us. Gregory, you are the pastiest white man who has ever wandered the post-apocalyptic irradiated wilderness without a shirt. You should really consider putting a shirt on, if nothing else, to help deflect the alpha particles that are bombarding your body from the fallout. This is, this is not a wise decision. I don't know who has more trauma. I'm going to guess probably Laura, so let's have Joyce do the talk. Could be, we'll have to wait and see. Some fine wares that might pique my interest. Always after a good trade. Well, if nothing else, I'm going to trade you a can of fuel for a can of fuel. kind of want your nail, too. But I can't trade a can of fuel for a can of fuel. I mean, if we're trying to actually make a net gain off of this store, what if I trade you food? Well, that's a little rich. I will take your television and your sack of limes. and eh, fine. I'll just take your... This is to make it as even as possible. Do I want to go full fuel for... Yeah, it's good. One shrewd salesman could have lost an arm in that trade. Uh, you may be overestimating Joyce's somewhat humble ability. She has a four charisma. I think he was just saying that because maybe he thought Joyce was attractive. 
They do say attractive people. I mean, studies have shown attractive people do tend to do better in a business environment. There's definitely a correlation. We're taking that carrier bag. I wish we could equip it. We can't, can't now. I, I wish we could equip it from our inventory, but apparently we can't. Definitely gotta have this wood. Might as well take that fuse. Anything we wanna... Eh, I don't really... I mean, I've just traded for that limestone, but if choice comes to... Choice comes to choice, push comes to shove. Why does push always come to shove, by the way? Uh, is that a push and a shove sort of the same thing? How can push come to shove when pushing and shoving are... They're, they're the same damn thing, man. Push can't come to shove. Pushes are shoves. I've had enough of that particular uh, sort of phraseology. That's it. I'm, I'm, I've had enough of it. I, th I think it's time we get rid of that. Let's banish it from the lexicon. There's no more when push comes to shove. Push and shove are the same thing. One doesn't come to the other. When you get one, you, you intrinsically have the other by necessity. Yeah, sure. Go talk to the strange man in the road. That's never gone wrong for anyone at all. At least this guy has the temerity to wear a shirt in the apocalypse. Hello, neighbor. Wasn't expecting visitors. The place is a mess. You wouldn't happen to have some wiring. I'm afraid I've run out. So embarrassing. Ten pieces should be enough. <laughs> no. How many accidents happen close to home? Are you th are you threatening me? Is that what that was? Was that a was that a veiled threat? I'm feeling a little lip like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead here. Are you threatening me? Because if you're threatening me, I will gut you like a fish. I will send Wally Cleaver to your house, and he will hack you into pork cutlets. Ex you know, except not pork. You're made of human. Don't give me a goddamn peep about starting a brave new world. I had no intentions of doing that, Dorothy, so no worries. Let's go ahead and have Donna start things off. We'll just say hi, then. Saw it all, left for corpses and morons like you thinking there's still a goddamn chance. Well, let's fight, then. I will not tolerate your bleak worldview, Dorothy. Women named Dorothy are supposed to wear gingham dresses, be from Kansas, and, you know, help fictional wizards fight their way back home. And also get hacked apart by a Wally Cleaver's dad with a hatchet. And then try to dis- you tried to disarm me? Really? That, that was your go-to plan, huh? Okay, not a great go-to plan. Let's see if we can subdue you. Yep. Well, there, see, I didn't even have to kill you. I just smashed your head in with a large-ish rock and took your shit. Now, you don't have to die, I don't have to kill you, and everybody's happy. Uh, antibiotics would be useful. Still, this party, they're all full up on goods. We did manage to increase our strength. We're going to get, I think, a little bit of trauma for the subdual strength and dex for Donna. And maybe a very minimal trauma. Wards are set up, man. He goes and hacks them apart, and then... Uh... You know, then we have uh, Donna come in with the headshot for the rock for the KO blow. Small hardware store might have some useful stuff. I don't know if we have a power drill or not. More wiring, which I want. I want that wiring. I don't think we can take any of this stuff. I was hoping there'd be some wood. It's a hardware store. How do you not have wood? What kind of hardware store doesn't have wood? I'm almost certain we have a power drill. Almost certain. But I'm not perfectly certain. So I'm going to get rid of this metal, which we have quite a bit of, and I'm going to take the drill. I know we have a lot of metal. Oh, great. Somebody's going to feed. Well, they go feed the cat. I just, I don't, I don't want to listen to him squall. I really don't. I've had enough. You have food poisoning, beaver. Why are you eating? Problem here. We've been ambushed. We could really do with some advice right now. Um, well, here's what you should do. You should murder everyone that's ambushing you. If they're out there and they're ambushing you, take your knives and insert them in their vital organs. Oh, I see you've come back to learn your lesson, Ronald. Should have given you that wiring. It would have been much easier. Well, Ronald, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but there's going to be nothing easier than inserting this sharpened piece of metal into your vital organs and making you be all of the dead. Really? Are you rethinking your whole please give me the wiring situation now? No, you're not thinking about anything except what the sky looks like as the last vestiges of breath leave your body. And you stare up at the bitter, bleak horizon, thinking to yourself, I shouldn't have come across June Cleaver. Damn right, you shouldn't have crossed June Cleaver. Although you did make good guy Francis take a life, and it's his first time. He's pretty broken up about it. 
Nothing you could do, Francis. It was kill or be killed, man. That was self-defense. No court in the world would convict you, mostly because there are no courts left in the world to convict you. Beef, you know what? Why don't you just go take some antibiotics, which I think will cure your food poisoning, and which we have an absolute truckload of. Stuff in the small house. Not really anything we want. I'll take the metal. Yeah, you're good. Do I want... I would rather have a teddy bear than a spring, I think. Also, we really need to build a toy box and a bookshelf to contain all of our toys and books. We have so many. On a related note, what around the old house here needs a little bit of fixing up? Because we're going to have... Okay, Wally, here's what you're going to do. I know ordinarily your thirst to kill and your bloodlust is insatiable, but we've got some routine chores that you're going to have to fill your time with. Why don't you go fix both of those? We have the parts to upgrade a system. Yes, in fact, we do, Beef, but we're saving them specifically to upgrade our tool bench so we can get up to level four stuff. Lone bearded man out in the wasteland. Who's that? Who's there? Are you are you blind, Gary? It's two beautiful women, two beautiful blondes carrying knives. I mean, to say hello. How are you? Hi, that would be me. I'm Joyce. You need a hand in all this. I can do that, but think fast because I'm not hanging around. No. You are an absolute garbage fire, Gary. I can't bring a blind man into our base. Sitting on mountains of food and water back there. Kind of am, actually, Gary. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's why I'm not bringing you into my bunker. If I had a bunch of worthless extraneous mouths that I was forced to feed. You took medicine, you jerk, beaver. All right, fine. Clean shelter, then. You're going to be vomiting up the place. You're going to be cleaning up your own mess, beaver. That's it. Not having any of this shit. You're going to puke all over. You're cleaning it up. Francis is going to check out a small house out in the wasteland. Beeves grabbing a mop and bucket and getting his lazy ass to work. Meanwhile, Wally can return your suit. And once the suit is returned, you just uh, start fixing anything that is broken. Fix that. When you're done fixing, I'll probably maybe throw some fuel in there. Um, hinges, matches. I mean, we might as well bring back the water because we've got plenty of carrying space for the nonce. The can of paint, I think I'll leave. I'm not sure what paint actually does. I'm tempted to try and paint a wall somewhere just to see specifically what that does. And after you're done fixing that generator, Wally, put some fuel in it. Beef, you're cleaning up your own awful. You, you have spewed the contents of your stomach onto the floor. It is your responsibility to clean said contents. You're never going to get finished if you just keep puking everywhere. That's all I'm going to say. Just keep digging your hole deeper. A stranger's coming to the door. We don't like strangers. We fear strangers. Clean, clean the shelter, Beaver. You just, you just yacked all over the floor. You're just going to sit there and stare at the puddle of your own vomit? Someone's at the intercom. Well, what do they want? What's up, Charles? Nice eye patch. Or headband? I can't tell if that's a hair pan or an eye patch. You're able-bodied and hard-working. You are indeed able-bodied and hard-working, Charles, and I am interested in making you a part of my shelter. You have fantastically good stats. 10 strength, 11 dexterity. You're smart as a whip. You're better than good guy Francis, but that means we probably have to put good guy Francis in the freezer. I'm still taking you on board, Charles. I, I you know what? I like the cut of your jib, man. You show potential, strong potential. We can... We can't take the duct tape. Eh, that's good. We've got everything we need there. Yeah, we're done. Hey, Charles, guess what? As the new guy in town, you get to uh, go craft an item. And that item's going to be an expansion to the shelter. So why don't you go dig a nice big hole? They want to talk. Should we deal with that yourselves? Always approach strangers, June. A stranger is just a friend you haven't met. What if this baseball becapped woman knows the secret to surviving the apocalypse? Doesn't really seem like it, because she's curious about what brings someone like us to our door. Um, we want Francis to start things off, because we want June to deliver the killing blow. We're going to try and you know, spread out the stress a little bit. Stress in Sheltered? It's a little bit like a nice, creamy yogurt spread for your toast in the morning. And when I talk about you, like, pee, yogurt spread, I'm telling you, if you have not tried yogurt spread instead of butter or instead of margarine or margarine whatever whichever way you prefer to say it i know if you're across the pond you're going to say margarine here in the states we typically say margarine but the thing is margarine no 
butter, good but bad for your arteries. What you gotta try? The yogurt spread, man. Butter flavored yogurt spread. It's creamy, it's smooth, it's delicious. It's the thing you did not know was missing in your life until you have put it on a piece of whole wheat toast. But I digress. No, we don't need you. You're way worse than Charles in every respect, and I was pretty hesitant to actually let Charles into the bunker. So, continue on your merry way. Baseball cap and all. Ah, Wally's cleaning up his own puke. Ferocious looking creature. Of course you always get involved with the ferocious looking creature, Ward. We're gonna get through some delicious- it's a bear again. You know, for an apocalypse, you would think that black bears would have probably lost some of their... Ow. You would think that black bears might have lost a little bit of their hold on top of the food chain, but this one? A woman with a rock just counterpunched it like Muhammad Ali. The bear blocked Ward's axe. I want you to defend yourself, actually. Meanwhile, Ward, why don't you... Ward getting slapped around like a punk. And now he's... Oh, oh God, Ward! Shit, we're in serious danger here. This bear is not goofing around. If we can get some solid strikes on the bear, we got a chance of taking him down. Ward is in... All right, you've got to attack, Donna. Nope. Not good. Oh, please, Donna, you got to hold on. Okay, Ward, you got to get it done for me, man. All right, Donna and Ward are in real, real bad shape suddenly. I'm thinking about recalling their expedition. We can't even take anything from the bear that we left. We should get tons of strength and dexterity from this. A lot of trauma. That's all that we Why did we get trauma for killing a bear? We need Donna and Ward coming back to the shelter. Hold on a second. Let, let's take a look at our expedition. Because we... No, I don't want to set up an expedition. I want to look at... Yes, abandon it. I want to look at existing expeditions. Donna and Ward are in real bad shape. Where are they, specifically? Where are you guys at? Donna, Ward. Which one are you? Is this you? Are you guys on your way back or on your way out? They've almost got to be on their way back, then. So, if they're on their way back, they're basically beelining straight for the shelter. Recalling them won't do us any good. They're not going to get back any faster. Let's just let them roll, then. And speaking of let things roll, uh, I mean, we're going to check this radio transmission. I think we've maybe let this, lo this uh, episode roll long enough. we got new guy Charles down there, busy excavating and expanding the shelter. Beaver, despite taking medicine, still has friggin' food poisoning because he's a worthless tool. Why don't you just sleep, Beaver? Let's get Wally and the Beeves' needs as fully met as we can, and then I think we're just going to send them out on a little mission. I also think we're going to wrap this episode up as soon as we finish looting here. Ah, let's just take everything. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support really does mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see whether or not Wally decides that he should be the one to cut off the new guy's head when he inevitably looks at him cross-eyed, you might consider subscribing as well, because Wally is a violent sociopath, and I think... Really, it's only a matter of time before he goes into a blood Madden rampage and kills literally everyone in the shelter. If you want to be around to see when it happens, subscribing is the way to guarantee it. Right now, thanks very much for watching. Wally, Zax, and I will see you again soon.